All right, so a very good morning um, to everyone who have joined us via online. So I see a good number, which is 107 and it's growing. And to Dr. Tawa, our distinguished speaker who have always be with USM in providing talks. Okay, so uh, today we have our first series for 2024. So welcome doctor again. Thank you very much for continuing this uh, tradition. Okay, so we are yeah, glad you. that you are here today to impart uh, knowledge with all of us. Okay, so uh, today we have a very interesting topic, which is the, uh, if you can see on the screen, is thesis development and uh, traditional and also the chat GPT. Okay, so, uh, okay, all right. I have uh, Kalai with me, who is helping me. Okay, so she's uh, looking into the slides and so on. Okay, so um, before we go further, okay. Before we go further, so uh, let me talk about the speaker. So uh, we have with us Dr. Tawa, uh, Tawa Maran Kanisen. I think everyone knows uh, Dr. Tawa. He is one of the GOT and he is also um, he's running a consultation uh, firm, which is doing proofreading and helping <laughs> supporting uh, students with disease development and so on. So um, besides that, he also have uh, impressive journals, grants, as we can see. And uh, one interesting thing about Dr. Tawa is his followers. I believe uh, we are all his followers in Facebook and so on. And there are a lot of things being shared, even in the WhatsApp groups and so on. And um, interesting, Dr. Tawa, that you are one of the Malaysia successful people and researcher of the year, yeah? So it's very Thank good. You. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope there's more to come, all right? So, yeah, um, as with other Tawa, I think it's very interesting as um, whenever we have a talk with him, um, he will manage everything. So, um, we as the host uh, does nothing much, but we will share the link uh, by 11.30am uh, later on. Okay, so uh, to those who have joined and would like... Uh, to record and also provide feedbacks for Dr. Tawa, please uh, wait for our uh, feedback form. And the rest, I think, uh, is all good to go. Uh, Dr. Tawa, so uh, you ready, right? I pass the session to you then. Sure, sure. Thank you, Mandy. And uh, as much as you thank me, I would like to thank you and your entire team as well for doing this from USM. Thanks. I think only your faculty is uh, kind of uh, very, very uh, agile. Lah. Okay, in organizing this. <laughs> yes, thank you so sure. much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me always. If you've, uh, several years ready now. You and before you, your colleagues and so on. So, uh, so we are from USM. I think I believe I also shared around. So I think we'll have from other universities as well. So welcome to the session today for 2024. Um, and uh, thank you, Anish. Thank you. Uh, so let me share my screen, and then we'll start the session. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me go. Okay, so um, I would advise all of you to keep your mic muted to not interrupt the flow of the session. Uh, but don't stop from asking questions because only then we will learn and then only only then the online session will be interesting. Others will be very boring. So ask questions. If you have doubt, if you have any issues, <laughs> if you want to share knowledge also, you can share uh, while, we, while I'm conducting the class. Okay, all to be done via the chat box. I have also a lot of questions to be asked to you guys. So um, it will be a very uh, engaging session. Uh, so today we are here. I know it's AI is going around and everyone loves AI and who does it, right? So, uh, but today we are going to ask the question. Okay, so uh, we have traditional method and then we have AI method. How do we implement both uh, seamlessly, coherently, so that we don't have any issues? And while implementing AI, what are the dynamites and landmines that we have to uh, avoid? Okay, to, to assure that we are doing the right thing. Okay, because uh, if this was bachelor's diploma and anything below, I won't be bothered. Now we are at the now we are the at the at the highest level of intellectual knowledge there is in this world. Okay, masters by research, PhD, and so on. There's nothing above PhD unless you do another PhD and you do another PhD and then you do another PhD. So at this very highly intellectual uh, um, arena, how do uh, traditional method, people like me, people like Mandy, all of us came from, you know, finished PhD very long ago. At that point in time, there was no AI, but still we managed to complete. Now we have additional tools, okay? We have additional AI tools, this and that software and so on. 
So how reliable are those? How can we use them concurrently with the traditional method? Because uh, one thing I need to emphasize to all of you, academia, once you cross masters, by once you cross masters, once you're at that level, uh, research, forget course for course, so you can leave it aside, okay? Masters by research and PhD, anything got to do with research, we become very conservative. Okay, our, our thinking becomes a bit backward. Uh, and then we can, we normally cannot propagate, um, uh, I would say we cannot propagate very quickly with the technology. Okay, because we're very conservative. We have our rules, we have our process, we have our corrections, we have our language, we have our, our uh, research uh, sources, literature. Uh, when, when some of you ask, what is uh, conservative? Okay, conservative is very simple. It's as simple as you cannot cite Wikipedia sources in your thesis. That is conservative. We are very particular of who we cite, what we cite, and uh, based on what are the, based on the stories that we build our case. So we are very, very conservative. So we are very selective of how we build our thesis. Okay, we are very, very uh, disciplined uh, in, that, in that manner. So for those who don't know how to be conservative, uh, that is something that I'm going to uh, share today, okay? Uh, so that's why we're going to look at um, traditional method and also chat GPT based, okay? There are many AI tools out there. Why particularly ChatGPT? I will also um, talk about it later. Okay, so I'm going to skip this. Let's save time some time. Okay, this is where I'm from, proofreading by UK PhD. We are an organization uh, headquartered in Cyberjaya, uh, but we have businesses in about 30, 4, 36, 37 countries now uh, actively. We are very, very active presently in Southeast Asia. Surprisingly, I don't know why. Uh, because usually the, the we are very, very active in, in South American region, Australia, uh, Middle East and so on, but now presently, I think uh, Southeast Asia is very active in research, especially Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand and so on. Okay, so very, very active. Uh, we are all online platforms, so I not necessarily have to have office in all the places, but we do businesses in all these areas. Uh, and we are, but predominantly, we are very, very active in Malaysia. That's our, our mother country. And so we work very closely with all the universities here. These free talks that I give CSR and so on, is actively only done for Malaysian um, uh, academics or Malaysian uh, universities. Okay, we, we, I try to keep it at that uh, because I also have limited time. So with that, um, today we are going to talk mostly on thesis and then we're going to talk on uh, proposal defense and why bar okay, towards the end. So this is the end game. So we keep it at the end. All of you are starting PhD, masters. You guys are working towards proposal defense and then working towards why bar. That is your end goal. So if your end goal is important, stay until the end to listen about my uh, tips for proposal defense and viva. What, what you should expect when you get into that room, okay? That room with your, you know, with your committee members, viva examiners and so on and so forth and proposal defense examiners. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about publication, not gonna talk about analysis, not gonna talk about thesis to general conversion. This all will come in second class. Okay, so stay tuned for second class. We are also going to talk about a very controversial issue that I always hear time to time, proofreading. Use AI tool to proofread, paraphrase, and so on. I'm not against it, uh, but systematically, you, are, you guys are, are actually uh, risking a lot of things that no one told you before, which I'm going to share today. Please, excuse me, I'm going to share today. Uh, okay, so as usual, please participate 100%. If you're doing anything else apart from listening to me, my advice to you, stop doing it because this class won't be repeated for the considerable future. Uh, so listen, learn, and ask questions. After the two hours, continue with your work, okay? Now, um, we have a lot of uh, uh, traditional thesis templates, uh, traditional thesis templates which governs the process of writing thesis in a very uh, uh, intelligent manner that you know, we used to do, that we, do, we did everything on our own without any tools. Uh, but I have made it much more simpler. Okay, what I've done is I've created templates for certain specific applications. Like how do you summarize the literature? How do you, let me close this piece. How do you critically review um, a, a paper, a literature? Where do you go and look for literature? How do you do a literature matrix? Uh, how do you write your literature background? And um, um, uh, how do you build a problem statement and so on and so forth. More templates are coming, I just don't have the time yet, but these are the some systematic review and then we have more here. Today we're going to talk about 
proposal defense viva questions. We're going to talk about table of content for a full thesis. Um, and um, this is going to come in in the third class of this year, introduction chapter one. Uh, and uh, these are common comments on proposal defense. Okay. So, um, how many of you don't know where to download these templates for free? Don't know. Please comment in the chat box. Okay, so. Okay, so seems like many don't know, so no worries. Uh, before, before, oh, sorry, before we get to where to find the templates, in order to use the templates itself, you will need a bit of uh, uh, explanation, right? How to use the templates and so on. So uh, if you uh, want to know how to learn to use those templates, you can also watch my uh, Facebook live classes. Uh, you can scan the QR code or alternatively, I will give you the link in the chat box to make your life easier. Okay, here is the link to my Facebook page. My entire playlist is located in this Facebook page. The entire playlist. So as I scroll down, um, you can find a lot of resources here. Okay, that we share on daily basis. You can click that that link. Okay, so um, these are all the papers, important literature that we share on daily basis. You can download. Uh, so you uh, sometimes you might not be able to find this paper, so we help you find, we share it, good ones that we think students and academicians should read. So we share it on the page. Lah. And apart from that, you can also, oh, yeah, one more thing, don't forget to click follow uh, when you arrive in this Facebook page to get all the latest updates, okay, if you want to. And then uh, you can go to videos. Okay, here, videos, uh, you can find all our classes. Now, this is the most popular class now. A lot of people are watching it. Uh, for some reason, sometimes certain videos will be boosted by Facebook and will become very, very famous. Okay, so this is one of those classes. And then for the rest of the classes, you can find it here, this playlist. Okay, playlist one, free writing tutorials by Dr. Tawa, 132 videos. You click see all. Uh, here you can find a lot of videos related to the templates, not only the templates, but everything else also. Like example, this uh, this video is related to literature review template. Then you've got problem statement template. And you, I also teach you a lot of other things, how to write introduction, background, problem statement, literature review, uh, high impact journal, structure, complete thesis, writing review journal, and so on and so forth. Many of those things, okay? So that I do here, you can go and watch and learn. Okay, over the years, I've accumulated all these free classes. Uh, people mostly pay to go to workshop uh, to learn these things. So what I've done, I've broken down into pieces to be able to teach you all, all, all of you at the most affordable rate, which is free. Okay, no need to pay anything. Just go and read, uh, study and go through it whenever you have problem on any particular area. Okay, so that is that. Um, now, where to find the templates? Uh, here is the link that will take you to those templates. Okay, so let me just share the link very quickly. Ah, here. Yeah. Okay. So once you click that link, link tree slash Dr. Tawa, which I've just shared in the chat box, it will basically show something like this. You just click continue, you will arrive here. Okay. So these two classes will be renewed at a later date. I really don't have time uh, this month and next month to run these classes. Uh, so I'll be renewing this probably for end of May or June. Okay, these two classes. So this is the essential part of this particular link where you will get connection to all my resources under one platform. So you don't need to be worried about missing out. So um, once you arrive here, you can click the subscribe button. Okay. What the subscribe button do as soon as I publish any new classes, I will announce to all the subscribers. So you will know there is a new free class coming up on a tap topic. Probably you'll be interested on. Okay. So you can just click the subscribe button, enter your email and just agree, agree. And that's it. Okay. It'll be done. So 
uh, you can find our services here and then the rest is here the rest will be here tiktok channel you can request for the thesis general templates here telegram group all the free video classes all the free notes that i provide you can download from here and the youtube channel as well okay so from here uh, um, you can join the telegram group first okay so we have over 15,000 members already. Um, let me just quickly um, show. Eh? Okay, so from here, once you have joined the Telegram group, let me just tag the uh, templates for you guys. Uh, templates, templates. Okay, here. You can download all the PDF templates here. So Telegram is like a resource center because the file posted in Telegram will never expire. That is the good part about Telegram. Lah. Uh, but the not so good part about telegram is no not many will actually open and check it including myself okay but i just keep it for like a resource center like a discussion center that's why anyone can comment in my group okay anyone can comment ask question share your 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 instrument to collect data uh, ask for advice and so on whoever wants to answer they will answer okay and any pdf files you're looking for papers and so on you can possibly ask also and uh, you can download all these templates from here to be used for your uh, proposal thesis angela okay so let me tag that so you can just click here it'll take you'll navigate you it will take you right to these uh, templates not only that if you have any particular issues also you can click the search button say you got problem with writing uh, or finding a theory or anything about theory just type theory and you'll find a lot of notes related to theories here. Okay, uh, notes and um, uh, information accumulated uh, for the past four or five years now. Okay, so that is that. Then we also have um, uh, a USM uh, WhatsApp group. Okay, but before we get to that, um, everyone able to join the Telegram group? Any issues so far? Okay, all right. So, how many of you here from USM, uh, from, from University of Science Malaysia only, from USM, that are not in our USM WhatsApp group, the official WhatsApp group for all these classes and so on? Okay, Dr. Mandy is there and so on. So, how many of you from USM, uh, if you're not from USM, don't need to comment. From USM, if you're not in USM WhatsApp group, let me know. It seems like quite a lot. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, share the WhatsApp link for USM. So, um, to all the participants, attendees, this particular group is only for USM students. So, if you're not from USM students, eventually you'll be kicked out, okay, because that is only for USM Resource Center. Now, let's say if you're from other universities, okay, if you're from other universities, you can PM me which university you're from. If I have a group for your university, say UPM, UKM, and so on. I will share the link to you later over WhatsApp, okay, but not here. So just hold for a while. Uh, this is the WhatsApp group for USM only. Now, if you're from other universities, you can WhatsApp me at this uh, particular link. Um, the universities. Okay. Other universities, you can WhatsApp me at that particular link. Okay, so the first link is for USM, only for USM students. The second link is for non-USM student. So you can click that, WhatsApp me, and uh, tell me you are from which university. Okay, so that I can share you the uh, appropriate link. You can join your own uh, particular database. Okay, so I hope that is clear. I'll let you all join for one minute. Let me just see. Massive amount of joiners, so I let everyone join first. Okay. Still okay. So I'll give you another 30 more seconds. Maybe people want to join. Okay, well, I'm receiving a message from Aini, who is from IIUM. I will share the IIUM link later. No worries.
Okay, 10 more seconds. If you want to join, please join now. If you're from other universities, please WhatsApp me so I can give you uh, the most suitable link for your uh, particular university, if I have it, if I have it. Okay, so I think... Um, I think we can continue the case. Okay. All right. So um, today we are going to cover five different segments. We're going to cover segment one, table of content for proposal and literature sources. Then we're going to talk about planning for proposal development. Then we're going to focus on AI tools and GPT-4. Study in AI, proposal defense and viva preparation. So if your end goal is PD and viva, we should be, okay, otherwise, Otherwise, I don't know what you guys are doing. So that should be your end goal. Stay until the end. Listen to my 25 most important tips for your proposal defense and viva uh, so that you can know going into the defense and viva how it's going to be. Okay. So with that, I would like to check with all of you who have joined today at which stage of PhD or master's you guys are in. Okay? That means whether you're just starting off, deciding your title, deciding how to argue, for those who are already finishing their proposal, chapter one to three, you can comment proposal. Otherwise, you comment start. And for those who already finished proposal defense, you can comment thesis. So please comment in the chat box so we can understand the distribution. Okay. All right. So it's a very good mix. We have a lot of people starting off and then we have a lot of people at proposal stage and then we have a lot of people at finishing stage also. So, uh, okay. Well noted, very clear. Now let's get started. So, okay. Before all of that, I forgot this final point here. As I keep mentioning about proposal defense, viva and so on, uh, it is very, very important to understand that uh, you only have three years if you're doing PhD. And then masters, you have far lesser than that, but you also have work lesser than that, lesser than PhD, obviously. So, um, although I would say don't stress out on graduating before time or graduate on time, uh, I graduated before time. Uh, I graduated, I finished in two years and uh, seven months, I think. Uh, no, not two years, seven months, sorry. Uh, two years and seven months, I finished my VIVA, two years, six, two years, seven months. Then two years and... Um, uh, 11 months i've already some i've already gotten the letter okay after correction i submitted and uh, around two years and 11 months i got the official letter okay so um as much as i would say it's nice to graduate before time but it's very very difficult and requires enormous amounts amount of hours that you need to spend per day okay so realistically graduating on time is more appropriate okay it's not that I'm discouraging you guys if you can graduate before time go ahead but it takes a heavy toll on you. To be honest, it takes a it's a heavy toll on you during that that course of uh, study. Um, eventually, you'll be you know running like a rat race lah, no choice. Okay, like for me, I, I couldn't extend. I have to make sure that I graduate on time because I don't have any more pounds sterling to pay for my fees. My scholarship ends at three years, and after that is pounds sterling, so no way. Okay, apart from the monetary uh, value, okay, what I've gained by graduating before time? What is the what is the the the, the uh, advantage or oh, someone tells you uh, you oh you very good you graduated before time not that okay not not bothered okay it doesn't really matter to me because um, when you go and look for a job yes you can say i graduated on time graduated before time but uh, it doesn't really make a big uh, factor okay it, honestly in 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 career industry i've been in career for what 10 10 plus years uh, it doesn't really make a very big impact but you can save time Okay, you can save a lot of time. Uh, you can save time, start focusing on your own personal life. 
You don't need to, uh, you know, communicate with supervisor anymore. Don't need people chasing behind you. You don't need to submit paper. And, you know, of course, you need to submit paper after your PhD. You still continue doing research if you want to. But at least, um, at least uh, you, um, I would say you, you have cleared up the most um, toughest thing in your life. Like, okay, the, the most toughest thing in your life. So, therefore, graduating on time is very essential. Not only that. They say three years, okay, three years, you must finish three years and we're thinking three years is not enough. Actually, three years is very long, very long, not for PhD, but for our human life, for our human life to, to study and do the same thing every day for three years and, you know, going towards a completion period, uh, you know, with all the stress that we need to go through, uh, correction, examination, all this, actually quite long, okay, three years is quite long. Um, and if you're going to make it four years, five years, six years, seven years, it's going to be worse. It's going to be horrible on you. It's going to take a toll on you. So my advice to you, if possible, try to graduate on time, if possible. Even if you extend, try not to extend more than a year. Okay, realistically speaking. As a full-time student, if you your only commitment is studies, you don't need to go to work every day, then graduating on time should be feasible. Should be. I'm not saying impossible, I'm not saying possible, but I'm saying it is feasible. You can do it if you want to. If you're a part-timer with a full-time job uh, and then you're doing PhD, okay, it's still considered full-time, huh? still considered full-time, then uh, graduating on time is a bit of a far reach. If you can reach, fantastic. I really respect people who work part-time and graduate on time. It's not easy, okay? But even if you extend because you're doing part-time, don't extend more than a year. Okay, don't extend more than a year. Um, so with that, I would like to share some of um, um, experience, okay, experience that I have gone through personally with, with my consultants. So we have uh, Dr. Zayed's thesis here, okay, he's from Iraq. He did in UTM, I think, two, or two years or so ago, okay, I think so, um, which he graduated before time. This was two years, seven months, okay with seven publications, two years, uh, two years, seven months, seven publications, and he became thesis of the year, but he was a full-time student. So that's a different scenario, a full-time student with no part-time engagement whatsoever. Then we have these two different theses that, that we have coached and, you know, a consultant and proofread and so on. These two scenarios, they are part-time students. Okay. They had full-time jobs. Uh, she was a lecturer and he was working with um, uh, IGM land, you know, industry. Uh, they managed to finish somewhat for uh, three and a half to four and a half between that. So still good because um, uh, you are not in uh, the risk zone. Okay, we call that risk zone. Now, this is what we call risk zone. My very good friend, Dr. Tahira, who okay, eventually she completed. After she finished her PhD, I never know, uh, I never know Tahira until she finished her Viva. Okay. Because only after Viva she came looking for me, that's when I met her. We eventually became good friends over the years. Uh, she is the uh, MBA coordinator in um, uh, UITM Pasikuda in Joho. So she was doing PhD in UTM for 10 years. Not because she's not smart, but she could, because she was in different scenario. A supervisor changed, some, one supervisor died and topic changed and a lot of things. Okay. Uh, and that made her extend her PhD until 10 years, of course, personal life, part-time student, and so on. And she went to Viva and she failed. That's the worst part, she failed. She had to redo everything back. Uh, so that's what I don't want you guys to face. So after her the uphill battle of her Viva, she failed. Then she approached me. I only saw her in tears. Okay, she wanted to quit. But eventually, uh, I met her, I think, in December 2020 or November 2020, and then she completed... Uh, 2nd February 21, okay, as, as announced. So this is a, a, a lifetime story that I will never forget. Lah. So uh, no matter how many years goes, I'll continue sharing a story because she's supposed to quit and go back home without PhD, but she still fought on uphill battle. She still continue. Imagine 10 years of work in a thesis, all scrap, like you cannot reuse it. You have to redo a lot of things back. So that's why I always advise when you're doing something, do it properly and do it carefully. Plan everything out. And now with the emergence of AI, things are getting not better, but worse. We are thinking that things are getting better, but students are digging more and more grave, more and more deeper problem without them knowing. 
it's leading to a lot of false information, fake information, unreliable information, turn it in AI, they just pluck and play, they just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, a lot of, a lot of theses are breaking down, a lot of proposals especially are breaking down. I'm, I'm seeing that every two days, three days, once I'm seeing one case breaking down, breaking down, breaking down, I need to redo everything because they literally just copy and paste from AI tools. So be very careful. Okay, be very, very careful. And that's the main reason that I've created such a class today. Okay, so how do you graduate on time? What are the traits that you need? Uh, or at least optimum traits, traits or characteristics that you need to get there. Okay, this is from my own experience that I'm sharing with you. I, I, I don't simply say this thing. I actually walked the talk and I succeeded and I'm here now. So I'm sharing the recipes with you. This is what I did. And this knowledge is for free because I want you to succeed, complete. That is our common goal. When in, 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 in our organization, when a student comes to us, our end goal is we want them to complete because I know how painful is the journey. I personally know it. So it's not going to be easy. Okay. If you think the journey is going to be easy, then you are in the wrong business. As simple as that. Okay. You need to understand that it's a very, very tough journey. Very tough. Okay. So, um, First of all, when you're in this journey, the tendency to quit is very, very high. Okay, at certain part, it will get very, very difficult, very, very tough. Okay, very, I'm honestly saying it's going to get very, very difficult. So, um, quitting shouldn't be an option. Okay, quitting shouldn't be an option. Right after that, make sure you read. You read your literature. Don't ask AI to read for you. Okay. AI reading for you or you read yourself is not going to make any difference to me, honestly speaking. Okay. But I know AI tools are not reading it properly or precisely. They are, I would say 50, 50, almost sometimes even 30, 70, sometimes hundred percent wrong. Okay. Uh, most of the time they are not, they are not right. So you want to use AI tool, chat PDF, AI PDF, uh, uh, perplexity, GPT-4, anything to read consensus and so on, read make sure you go back and read the paper also. Don't just take it, you know, whatever, um, uh, what do you call that, the, the software gives you, you just take it and then you just uh, use it. Don't do that. For uh, an example, I've done an experiment. Okay, I'm going to do more experiments soon. If you go to my uh, TikTok channel, if you have never seen this yet, uh, this is my uh, TikTok link. Okay, if you want to uh, click and follow. If you go down here, uh, there is one video here, uh, this one, writing a problem statement AI tool. So we can see how a software um, reads a paper falsely. Okay. So um, if I go here, this, um, I use perplexity, okay, to talk about uh, patients facing issues in nation healthcare, just for fun. I wanted to see the topic. Okay. So I went through, I asked the flow to write problem statement and the flow wrote me a problem statement. And in this problem statement, the software declared patient satisfaction in nation hospitals is heavily influenced by the quality influenced. Huh? It's already influenced, heavily influenced by the quality of service provided. Okay. They already declare it is influenced already. The quality of service is bad. Okay. And these are the uh, two citations given. So I went on to deep dive into that, those citations. Uh, let me skip that, go there. Okay, this is the paper. Okay, this is the paper. A systematic review of patient satisfaction on health information exchange in Malaysian public healthcare organization. So when you read this, this title, it seems like the study already done. But AI tool doesn't know the difference between systematic review and empirical paper. They just read the title, they, they I mean, the, the software will feel that, okay, it's done already. The study has been done, okay? So from there, when I search the word quality of service, serve qual, lah, that's what the, 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 the AI tool is saying. So I am looking at quality of service. Uh, I search through the whole paper, line by line, I search for that word. See how it describes every, uh, every aspect of it. So until the end, I came, okay, right before conclusion, I read. This is the final statement with the word serve qual and quality of service. This indicates that serve qual could, could, be adopted to measure the quality of services and patient satisfaction in the Malaysian healthcare organization. But AI tool already said, literally said that it's already done. 
but the paper is saying completely different. Eh? So if you go and tell in your paper or in your problem statement, this particular literature said that it's already done because you just copy and paste, you might just take the literature on there and you paste the statement, you rephrase a bit. But in reality, it is false. And you should know that examiners or supervisors, most of them will go through the literature. Especially now with AI emergence, they know a lot of fake information coming in. They will go through deeper. And this is perplexity. This is one of the most, this is the, one of the best software out there. Okay, after GPT-4, this is the second best. And even this is giving such a false statement. And imagine you use this as part of your problem statement. This is what most of you might not know. If you're using, continue using. That's your choice. But go back and read the paper again. Make sure whatever summary or suggestion or critical statement the, uh, the software gives is actually true. Okay, it's actually uh, the case. Okay, so um, that is the, the outcome. Sorry. So my strong advice to you always read your own papers. Okay, read your own papers. Then from there, novelty. Okay, novelty. So um, once you read properly on your own, and get precise and pristine information, you can start seeking for novelty. Without reading on your own and getting precise information, novelty is a far fetch for you. Okay, it's a far fetch. Every time I receive message, even yesterday I received one from a medical student uh, from UKM. Okay, wrote proposal, 100% from GPT-4. Failed proposal defense because the entire story is not permissible. There is not actually a problem. Everything, most of it, 70% fake. Lah. So, failed PD have to redo everything from UKM. So, more and more, I'm raising awareness. Okay, more and more um, on the actual problems. I will also share more. Okay, now, uh, coming back to the software. Okay, after novelty, a bit more on the software. So, today, we're going to talk about GPT-4. Okay, and then we're going to, I'm not going to talk about perplexity, but I showed a video on perplexity. You might be wondering why I talk about GPT-4 or perplexity only. I don't talk about consensus. I don't talk about elicit. I don't talk about uh, any other software. Okay, example, and this particular class. Why I start with GPT-4. Okay, my first question to all of you. Who is the major owner of chat GPT-4? Can anyone um, explain to me? Of course, OpenAI. Yes, OpenAI is the major owner, but who owns the entire entity, major shareholder, major shareholder? Anyone can give me an idea? Exactly. Microsoft. Okay. Microsoft owns a big chunk of it. Uh, definitely um, not Outman. What is his name? Huh? Something Outman, lah, I know, but it's not exactly Outman. Um, uh, not Google. Not Google. Uh, he owns majority also, but the, now the most majority is owned by Microsoft. Lah. They're basically funding it. And GPT-4, GPT-4 alone, eh, received a funding of 100 billion. It cost them to build it. There was GPT-2, then GPT-3, then GPT-3.5, then GPT-4. I'm not telling 100 billion for two, and then GPT-3, and then GPT-3.5, and then GPT-4. Not all combined 100 billion, eh? no. The previous one had its own, um, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, CapEx, okay, capital expenditure. But for GPT-4 alone, stand alone, they spent minimum of 100 billion to develop it. Okay, top-notch engineers, top-notch uh, algorithmists, top-notch uh, um, uh, system, top-notch servers, and so on and so forth. Okay, then you have perplexity. Who is the uh, majority owner or, or uh, uh, my major shareholder uh, of perplexity? Student will be GPT-4 available in Microsoft Copilot for free. Right? As far as I know, GPT-4, you need to pay. I am doubtful if Copilot using GPT-4 or GPT-3 or 3.5. I think it should be 3.5. Maybe 4. I'm not so sure because I'm using premium paying. So I never really go and investigate that. But when once they start paying Copilot also, they give for free, then it defeats the whole purpose. So you need to recheck back. Okay. Now, anyone can tell me who owns perplexity. No one knows? Okay. It's owned by Amazon. Okay, in a way, like they're the major shareholders. They got the, the, the first initial major funding from Jeff Bezos. Okay, not Dr. Tawala. I wish. La. Okay, I really wish. 
it requires a lot of money okay a money that even the amount of money that even government cannot fork out that is the kind of money they are investing okay massive massive amount of money okay perplexity also a couple of hundreds of billion already yet yet it is giving false information i just shown you a video perplexity later i'll show you gpt4 now these two giants compared to the rest lec consensus leap map uh, uh what is that the other one um, pdf ai chat pdf all these are uh, is uh, is a joke lah. the amount of investment they are doing into it and the amount of algorithms they are running for the other software eh? um, i won't even dare go close to the size space and so on because they're too small ai requires a lot of investment massive amount of investment so the massive amount of investment reflects in the precision the kind of engineers and the kind of outcome that you can re uh, reliably ex expect and even then they're making problems so how about with little investment the other engines are running can you actually trust them? I don't. So it's up to you. Okay. So, uh, and also, I'm not selling any of this software because I don't need to. They are too famous. So that is very clear on my side. Okay. So I'm not selling any of this. All this you can buy online. I get zero income from this. But I personally use GPT-4. I only tell you, I advise you to use what I'm using. As simple as that. I don't advise you to use software that I am selling because I don't sell software. I don't sell because um, I don't trust them. Okay. I don't recommend, I don't do videos to sell them. I don't do videos to promote them. I have, although I receive many offers today, I receive one offer from a software called um, uh, from UK. They want me to promote. Uh, it is called, it is called app.studyrecon.ai uh, from UK. They want me to promote the software. Uh, but I don't want to. Literally today. Okay, since yesterday they're discussing, they have told which app. I just had to look at it. Um, I haven't explored fully, but most likely I won't. Okay, because I know it's not precise yet. It's not there yet. Okay. So, um, if you're using a software, make sure you know how it works, the ins and outs, uh, and uh, whether it's actually giving you the most reliable information or not. Okay, so next thing, don't depend on supervisor. Not telling this negatively, but that is the reality. If you're in master's by research PhD level, if your supervisor guide you step by step, you are the luckiest person in the world, honestly speaking. Okay, but if your supervisor is telling you, okay, go do this, okay, you go do that yourself, go do that yourself, and so on, that is normal. That is absolutely normal. If you think it's abnormal, actually it's not. It's absolutely normal. So you are on your own. The day you realize this, your life becomes easier. Next thing, focus on writing. You need to write. If you're not writing, something is wrong. But that doesn't mean you write useless things. You write proper things. Okay, you write proper things. Get proper information. Start writing a background, introduction, problem statement, and then uh, your literature review, your critical review, your methodology, papers. Start writing. Every day or every day, every, every few days once, every few days once, write something. Keep developing your writing. Keep drafts. Later, you can combine all of it. Yeah? Then read a lot of theses, not a lot, but I would say two to three lah, at least. Those are the key samples for you, okay, key samples. And then publish, publish, and publish. Very, very important. If you want to have an impressive thesis, it's not only uh, written as a good thesis, but what publications come with the thesis. It gives a different impression to your exhibits, okay? And finally, if you're stuck, if you're... If you cannot, if you, if you don't know how to move forward, ask for help. Don't be shy. If you are, you have a supervisor who is very good in quant qualitative, or very good in a certain uh, software only, but you're using some other software, you're, you're using some other methodology. Say you're using Quanti, and the supervisor doesn't know. Within your university, approach other professors, ask other lecturers, try asking. Okay, if they say they're not going to teach you, never mind. Find another one. Keep trying until you find someone who is willing to at least guide you to the right path. I have done it myself and it worked. It, cre it cleared out the most important hurdle that I faced in my first paper. Okay, so don't be shy. Never be shy. If you read a paper, you don't understand a paper, you can email the authors. Email all the authors. If you tell me in this current digital age, you cannot find their email address, that would be almost impossible. You'll find their email somewhere. You might even find them in it. You might even find them in LinkedIn. You might find them in ResearchGate, ping them, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, somewhere. 
they'll have a digital footprint somewhere that you can contact them if you really want the answer. I have done it. That's what I used to do. Okay. I will ask them, how can you get this result? This result have some, I won't tell them issues. I'll tell them I'm trying to re-measure the same thing. What are the conditions? And they'll tell these are the conditions I did. Then I know, okay. All right. So that's what you need to do. You need to be very, very, very proactive. Okay. Table of content for a thesis. This is what you need to design. Okay. I've only have one sample for quantitative. I don't have a sample for uh, qualitative or uh, computer science, I mean, experimentation or, or modeling yet. I don't have the time yet, but I will develop very, very soon. Okay. Um, when you're going to start writing a proposal, make sure you put together a table of content like this to show your supervisor what exactly you're meaning to do, what exactly you want to write. Go into more details, 2.1, 2.1.1, 2.2.2, 2.2.3, .2 and so on and so forth. And then when you're going towards chapter four and five, start putting it together as well. Okay. Then, uh, and, and by the way, this template can be downloaded from my Telegram group. Huh? If you're not in my Telegram group, uh, please let me know. I'll share the link. You guys can go and, uh, go and visit, join and download it for your own usage. Okay. All right. Now, where to source literature? impact factor and then scopus and all these things. Where do you source for literature? Okay. Uh, we have two types of journals. Okay. One, we have hybrid. And then one more, we have open access. Hybrid or open access. Okay. Only two, two different types you have. Now, uh, for hybrid, these are all hybrids. Okay. What is open access? This is open access. Okay, a quick question to all of you. What is hybrid? Can anyone tell me? Okay. So hybrid means they provide both options, free option and open access options. Okay, what does it mean by free option, open access option? Basically, if you go to um, a journal, let's say we take Journal of Business Research eh, from Elsevier. Okay, open the journal, we go into it, and then here we have Journal of Business Research, supports open access. Okay, that means it's a hybrid journal. So if you go down further, you can see $3,820 to make it open access. Okay, that means this journal, you can either publish for free as authors or you can make it open access. That means you pay this amount of money. Okay, this amount of money. So how much is that in RM? It is a lot. Okay, at our brilliant currency rate now, it will be... Um, 18,230 ringgit. Okay. How many of you here are willing to pay 18,230 ringgit to make your journal open access? Please kindly let me know. I'll start writing papers with you. Anyone here willing to pay uh, 18,000 ringgit to make your paper open access? That means anyone can read. You don't need to have subscription to read. If anyone willing to write, uh, willing to pay, I'll write paper with you. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, no one. Okay, no one smart. Uh, no, I won't say. I won't say the words. I won't say the word dumb. Okay, I will. I will say no. Not many are rich enough to pay. Even our universities locally, I don't think they will pay that amount of money, because that amount of money you can actually pay down payment for a car already. Not normal car. You can easily buy like Toyota LTS or Toyota Vios in Malaysia easily. Easily you can buy that. Ten percent down payment actually more than that already. So no one actually goes for that option unless, unless they go to journals like 100% open access. Elsevier Helion. Okay, Elsevier Helion is not a um, hybrid journal. It's a 100% open access journal. Okay, Elsevier Helion. It's also web of science. See, open access. It, the difference here is very simple. Huh? You see here, supports open access. This is 100% open access. Okay, that is the difference. So you can choose to pay or you don't need to pay. If you don't pay, 
the journal will be locked. No one can read. Okay, then now I ask you a question. Since no one wants to pay, but in your university, if you try to access this journal through USM portal or whatever university you come from, whichever university, when you try to access these journals through your own portals, you can access. Then who pays the money? Someone has to pay this money. Who is paying it? You can read the papers from this journal, like this particular journal, any other journal hybrid. Eh? If, you, if you don't pay, the journal becomes locked. Okay, that means you cannot open, you cannot read. Uh, like example, this journal. Okay. Uh, I have to log in, then only I can read. Okay, through organization, I need to log in. Right? Otherwise, I cannot read. Yes, Asma. University pays, Anas, yes. They pay huge amount of money so that you guys can read. That's why whenever you guys, not you guys, some of them complain to me, or oh, USM cannot access this, UKM cannot access that, UM cannot access this, because it's very, very expensive. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. They pay, they, if they pay multi-million dollars or ringgit per year to be able to access Elsevier, Taylor, Francis, Wiley, Sage, all Emerald, all these IEEE, all these journals. A lot of money is being spent on that. Okay. Or you you can uh, you can only read from open access. If university got no access, you can only access this open access. Now, now you clear huh? either hybrid or open access. Yeah, clear. Now, how many percent of journals are actually full open access? Very little. In the entire research paradigm, I would say maybe uh, less than less than 10%. Not that at least. Okay, maybe uh, no, the right approach would be uh, less than 10%. Okay, less than 10% would be actually full open access. MDPI, screwed. Frontiers, screwed. Indavi, screwed. Most of the Scopus open access are so getting kicked out, eventually getting kicked out because too much of uh, um, predatory uh, publishing, too much. They publish too fast, they accept too low quality because of money. But these people don't have that problem. They don't need to, they don't need to uh, rush, they don't need to uh, uh, publish low quality because end of the day, they get money. Okay, universities will pay them. Organizations will pay them, so they, they always publish very high quality. But open access, that's why people say open access, sometimes they easily accept, which is true in a way, which is true in a way, uh, because, um, uh, but most journals are now, also they are start looking into open access, uh, but uh, they, they, they have to survive. If they have to survive, they have to publish as many as they can. They have to get that open access fee. Then only they can survive, okay? So now, the next, Question is, when you use AI tool to do literature review, how will the AI tool access all the hybrid journals that are not open access? If you don't want to pay 18,000 ringgit, that means many in the world don't want to pay 18,000 ringgit. That means what you do is what most of the others will do, okay? In this research world, 95% of the articles won't be open access. Yes, Anas, you should thank your university. They're actually paying a lot, okay, a lot. So 95% are not open access. So then, um, if not open access, how do artificial intelligence tools, including GPT-4, can access those journals? The answer is they don't. They don't. That means they don't access about 80 to 90% of high-impact journals. They don't. You are, uh, what you call it, navigating in the space of open access only for your literature. You're not going to the deep end of the literature. You're not. Okay, that's, that's the problem that most people who advocate for AI don't tell you. Okay, even if they do, okay, even like uh, tools like Jenny AI, they do uh, 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 read through certain, they, they show you certain references and so on. That is not open access. But, okay, firstly, cannot access subscription-based journal. Even if it can access AI tools, Jenny AI, GPT-4, uh, whatever consensus and so on, it's only through research gate or it only gives you the info from abstract. It cannot give you the full article, cannot, because copyright restricted, cannot. They will be sued from kingdom come if they reveal all the information. Because then it's unfair to USM, USM paying so much, right? If the journal allows AI tool to give all the information out for free, USM will stop paying. 
because the cheaper option is AI, then these general companies will go broke. Do you know how much how much the worth of Elsevier? Elsevier revenue, I think last year or two years ago, was about six or seven billion dollars. Billion. So if if you can get all the information from AI, full information of the paper, they will go bankrupt immediately. Not in due time. Immediately they'll go bankrupt because all the universities will stop paying them. Use AI tool only. Mm. Cannot. They will never allow AI tools to read the far end of their papers. AI based paper reading is good, but can be flawed. Need to take extra care. So as I shown earlier, look at my TikTok for example. If you're going to use it for full literature review, only open access will be mostly used. 85% of remaining literature is left unexplored. So what happens? So what? I only need open access. I only need open access. Lah. Doesn't matter. Lah. So what? If you are writing a problem statement, a literature review, an entire thesis only with 10% of the information, and you're going for examination, but your examiners will dig in 100% of the information. They'll go to Google Scholar. They won't go to GPT-4 or Jenny AI. Remember that. When I do research or any old school people do research, they'll go to Google Scholar first. They'll search in Google Scholar and Google Scholar will give out all the best journals, IEEE, YD and so on, which your AI tool wouldn't have shown to you. So once they start digging, if they find a work that is very similar to yours, 70%, 80%, even 100% similar, or already did, already did something more advanced than you, then you are doomed. This is the risk that people don't tell you when you're using AI tools. No one tells you this. A lot of people are advocating for AI tools. They're charging 200, 300, 400 ringgit per class. Uh, they're teaching how to use GPT-4, use perplexity, use consensus, and so on. Some teaching it for free because they're selling software. By end of the day, none of them tells you the actual phenomena of AI tools and its limitation. Is this the problem of AI tool? No. Is this the problem of academia? No. It's just how naturally we are. Like I told you the word, we are conservative. Okay, all the um, um, uh, publication companies, they are very secretive. You might say, oh, uh, there is a lock, by the way. My, my drawing is very horrible, so that's supposed to look like a lock. Okay. Um, you might say, oh, then we have Sci-Hub. Sci-Hub will access, but AI tools cannot access through Sci-Hub. Sci-Hub founder is hiding in Russia. She's under, uh, she's in the list of, uh, she's, in, she's in great notice. Interpol looking for her, FBI looking for her. So when you access SciHub, you are doing an illegal work. Huh? Remember that always. So when you access SciHub, use VPN. Use VPN to hide your IP when you access SciHub. Don't use your own IP to access SciHub. Huh? You're basically committing crime. You don't know when it will come back and bite you. Don't do that. Don't take it lightly. Yeah? This is uh, IP protection. Okay. So my advice to all of you, use your AI. Use. I'm not saying don't use it, but don't miss out your traditional methods of carrying out your own literature search and reading. Okay, don't miss that out because academia space is different. We work differently. So AI tool got a lot of boundaries uh, that needs to be taken care of. Okay. Now, chapter one, I'm not going to go through this. This is for our uh, third and fourth class. I just put here to show you what we're going to explore later. So we're going to talk about background and then after introduction background and then with background, we're going to talk about literature review a bit and then we're going to talk about problem statement and solution, all of this during our third and fourth classes. But however, I will touch base a bit on, oh yeah, some of the information you can also uh, find on my existing classes on Facebook. Okay, I've taught a bit some time ago. If you want to learn immediately, you can look at these two classes. Okay, But today I'm going to share a bit Okay, more details are shared during third class, but today I'm just going to share a bit on problem statement. Now, how many of you here are facing issues with their problem statement? Always kena uh, maki, always uh, you know, get scolding for, for problem statement. Supervisor is still not happy, examiner is not happy, everyone keep complaining about a super problem statement. How many of you face that problem? Please let me know in the chat box. If you guys don't face problem at all in your problem statement, then... This will be the first class ever. Okay, there you go. All right. How many of you got chased away from their supervisors group? <laughs> supervisors group. <laughs> Just kidding. I've, I've seen students getting chased away. Okay, problem statement is a, is a real uh, painful thing to write. It's not easy. It requires a lot of strategy because um, 
problem statement is where you market your idea. It's a marketing uh, platform. Okay, it's a marketing arena. You need to market your idea. You need to tell existingly what is the problem, why you need to solve this problem, and why the existing um, uh, uh, solutions are not enough, not good enough, and then why you need to do your part, why you need to introduce your solution. That is all problem statement about. In, in very easy words, in, in a very overall context, that's what uh, you do. Okay? Uh, on your heart, but learn it. Very, very good. A problem statement must be a problem to everyone, otherwise it won't be called a problem statement. That depends. Okay, took a lot of time writing it up to the mark. Okay, congratulations, Asma. Okay, very good job. Uh, so, um, very simple. If there is a problem, you need to convince there is a problem. How do you convince? You must tell that if you don't, uh, you must tell that all the existing solutions have not done enough. And most importantly, you must also convince people why you need to solve this problem. That those things must be in your problem statement. So, on that note, here is a problem statement template I've developed based on the uh, thesis that we coached before, I think back in 2020, already completed, student graduated, published all the papers, already, so I can convert that into template, okay? Um, seven steps problem statement template that we uh, guided, coached, and so on. Uh, but I have to also emphasize, everyone don't write the same. So even if you come to me for coaching, one of, my, one of our consultants consult you, it might not be the same. Your supervisor might have totally different style. This is, an optimal style, but there can be many different styles. Okay, but this is just a guideline for you. So I've broken down into paragraph. This is paragraph one. Okay, in paragraph one, step one, you reintroduce why you're doing the research. Okay, that means you're connecting back to your background. I won't go through this, I will explain this in detail in the third class, but I'm doing it now so that you can start using it if it is a pressing issue for you. Step number two, why is it important, see, to investigate the topic? Why, why you have to investigate? Leave it as it is. Now, why you have to investigate? You need to convince. Step number three, what is wrong with the current process or situation? You need this to prove your case. Current existing solutions, what, what is wrong with them? Okay, next, step number four, what is the first regard to potential solution? Okay, you need to talk about your potential solution and introduce all the minor literature review on the existing solutions. You should talk about other people, what they have done, what is very wrong, and so on. You have to go a bit into details. And from there, you start building up your critical review to show the exact limitation. And finally, paragraph number four. You see, and this paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three is final paragraph. You need to introduce your solutions and underlying techniques. And from there, you connect to your RO and RQ. Most of the time, you cannot get a right RORQ because your problem statement doesn't lead to a solution. Okay, that is the majority problem all the time. Okay, next thing, planning for proposal development. Okay, so that one done, already settled already. If you want to use, you go and download from Telegram group. Now, next thing, planning for proposal development. Okay, this is my master diagram. Okay, this is what we do, 12 steps consulting framework for both PhD and master's students, uh, for thesis and publications. And also this one is followed by some of the academicians, um, uh, some of the academicians to see when exactly they can extract papers. Okay, when they can exactly extract papers. So, from this, we break into two segments, okay? Proposal, Master's of PhD, and then Thesis, Master's of PhD, okay? Two segments. First phase, okay, or not two segments, there are two phases. First phase. Step one, 10 sections roughly, three days per section, okay? I don't want to go into deep details, but I'll just tell you overall how long it takes. Eh? Step one takes around uh, one month. What is that? That is your 10 pages proposal. Okay, 10 pages proposal, which uh, looks into your preliminary proposal, RO, RQ, theory, framework, and so on. Okay, so that's 10 pages. Why you need to do that? People who skip this usually struggles a lot. Why do I say that? Because uh, you are not informing your supervisor in 10 pages what exactly you're trying to do. You, if you go straight to chapters 1, to 3, if your supervisor don't like the idea, you have to scrap the whole thing. I've seen many students scrapping it and then coming back overall again to start from step 1 when they come to me. If you have this a very good strength for you, your supervisor will know ultimately what you're trying to do. 
what is your ulterior motive, motive? What do you want to do? So if they are they agree, they'll ask you to expand further. If they don't agree, they'll tell you scrap the idea altogether. So at least you scrap only 10 pages. You don't scrap 80 pages. So that's the strategy there. That is about one month. Then you take about three months to finish your chapters one to three. Three months is an ideal time if you plan properly. If you don't plan your first year, you take honeymoon, you rely, 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 you drag your time, uh, then you have to rush through everything. So if you look at this, my strategy always, within the first semester itself, you settle all of it. Settle your proposal already. Worst come to a second semester, but most likely first semester must be done. Okay. Then proofreading. Very, very important. Okay, very, very important. Uh, proofreading software. What can I use? Grammarly. If you want to use software to proofread, if you think that is enough, for me, it's absolutely not enough. For if you're not speaking, if English is not your first language, it won't be enough. Okay. But um, um, uh, proofreading, if you really want to use software, stick to Grammarly only. Don't stick to InstaText. Don't go to Edit GPT. Don't go to Chat GPT. Don't go to all these other software. Why? Edit GPT, InstaText, and all other proofreading software, they are not well proven. They are not. Grammarly is like GPT-4. It is the most proven software out there. Okay, the most proven software out there. So you stick to it. Okay, but if your English is not your first language, you're already struggling to write, I can guarantee that Grammarly won't be enough. And the next thing is when you proofread, let's say we chat GPT with uh, whatever software use complexity, use edit GPT or Quillboard and so on. Turn it in AI first will pick up 100%. Confirm, I guarantee will pick up. Okay, uh, and Grammarly also, Grammarly, when you see and it gives you the solution, it will tell you uh, grammar check, at the, at a, uh, uh, at n, or uh, no, this grammar is wrong, this grammar is wrong, it will give you a suggestion. Sometimes it gives you a full sentence. It will rewrite the full sentence, two or three lines. Don't accept that. Don't accept. The moment it runs the full sentence, right, it's AI written already. Your alternative AI will pick up. To be honest to you, until uh, I think January or February, I didn't know about it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, January, February, I didn't know about it. Because last year version, Grammarly, I think last year, was it December? I think as of December, okay, one of those months, a few months back. La, I didn't know. Because last year, until uh, end of last year, Turnitin AI did not pick up Grammarly. But when Grammarly AI started, you uh, know, implemented and they give more and more information to rewrite, Turnitin AI started picking up. So I've seen papers that was written 100% by human, used Grammarly to correct, and they already crossed many versions, 11 versions, 12 versions, they used Grammarly, correct, 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 except all the sentences. They cannot even go back to the first version. So this is already the 12th version. But when you scan the in AI, general reject, then only they found out, then only actually I also knew. Before that, I've never, I've never seen the in AI picking up. Then once they come back to us, they say, the in AI picked up. Uh, how do I solve this problem? How can this be possible? Because uh, I wrote everything on my own. I only sent for proofreading only. So we check Turnitin AI because usually proofreading, you won't check Turnitin. So we check Turnitin AI of the original document and we found that it's Turnitin AI already picked up already because of the Grammarly usage by the student. That's how we found out. Then we did few experiments on other documents. Uh, yes. So Grammarly, when it gives you suggestion, take the uh, grammar only, like one or two words, one or two words, one word, you know, the, uh, and the one, okay, don't take the full sentence. Unless after you use Grammarly, you want to again rephrase, that's your problem, lah. okay, that's your part to do. Lah. Okay, but very, very important to do proofreading here. Why? Because when you go to proposal defense, your examiners, okay, must be able to understand your document, must be able to appreciate the content of your document, okay, the content of your document. If they cannot understand or appreciate the content of your document, then your, your proposal defense life will be very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Okay. Now, those are the things. Next thing, once you, uh, once you arrive at this stage, it's around one month, you can start extracting your journals, keep it six months to one year. You can write conceptual papers, systematic reviews, and so on. From there, start preparing for defense. Okay, here normally we will coach, we will teach them how to do slides, we will teach them how to, you know, defend, we will teach them how to, you know, counter and understand, you know, proposal better and how to, what kind of questions you'll get and so on. We call it mock defense lah. 
Then you go for proposal defense. If you do everything correctly, I can guarantee you'll get minor correction here. But if you don't do everything, all of this properly, you don't defend properly, most likely major correction and one month won't be enough. Okay. So that is the time taken if you do all the steps precisely properly. Okay. Then comes here, the thesis phase where you go chapter four, five and so on. So step number seven, data collection, we cannot anticipate how long it will take because it depends on your study. Then we have step number eight, analysis, chapter four and five. Okay. So here we usually do smart PLS, SPSS, uh, MATLAB, R, uh, Python, uh, what is the thing, uh, eViews, uh, Amos, many software like NVivo, Atlas and so on. So usually roughly it will take around three months to complete chapters four and five from what we look at students, uh, that's how long it takes uh, op optimally. Step number nine, one month to integrate all the chapters together. Uh, update references, expand the content and so on. Then from there, you can extract two more journals. But if you see here, my strategy is to extract earlier so that you can go through the entire time to make sure that the paper is under review and accept at certain point. Before you submit your final thesis, you already fulfill your one to two publication requirement. Okay, Because if you only start writing here, it is too late because it will take another six months to one year or one year plus to get published. So eventually you cannot graduate. You finish your thesis, everything, you wait until paper accept. So that is a wrong strategy. Okay, then from there, make sure this proofreading is human based card. Okay, it's human based. Because this is going to your external examiner. I'm not telling this so that you'll hire us, you go and hire whoever you want. There's many in the market. But my advice to you get a human being to read and thoroughly and proofread and correct your thesis. Make sure it's on mark. Make sure they give you a lot of comments so you will know where you're going wrong. Okay, because this is going to external examiner and this is your lifetime work, your lifetime's work, three to four or five years. Do it properly. This proofreading is very, very crucial. Okay, then from there, so we put here 1.5 months, take time to do it. Then prepare for your Viva as usual, mock Viva slides and so on. Go for Viva. Coming out of it, you will have five options after your Viva. First, no correction. Can it be done? Possible? Yes. No corrections. We have gotten a few. We got one last year, August. Okay, we were very lucky. Uh, Dr. Sharifa from UM got zero corrections okay, in a thesis. UM, UM Medical Faculty. Next to it, minor correction. You can get it most of the time. Minor correction. Then you get major correction. Okay, major correction, uh, which is still okay as long as the fourth and the fifth, which is major correction with revival or complete fail. This fourth and fifth you don't want to get. That is the last thing you should get. Okay, so these are all the time taken. And how do we normally assist students? We go on coaching mode where we build a comprehensive coaching guide like this, section by section, chapter by chapter, step by step, proposal and then thesis. And then we'll go through, we'll teach you how to do once you finish doing. Then we will comment and ask you where to improve and inform you where to improve. Okay, or otherwise we will uh, go on full consulting mode. Okay. So that is that clear. Now let's go to segment number three, AI tools and GPT-4. Okay, this is the segment number three. Now, uh, any questions so far? Okay, if no questions, then let's take a five minutes break. Get a breather a bit, especially for me. Okay, get a breather a bit. We come back for the most important segment on how to actually do prompting on GPT-4 to get the right answers that you want and which how to find out whether it's false answer or right answers. Very, very crucial, okay? Very, very crucial. Uh, and uh, and then we'll go to Trinity AI and the final bit is quite uh, important, proposal defense and viva, okay? So let's take five.
Okay. Welcome back. So, um, so far, no questions. Okay. So, AI tools collection. Yeah, there are many AI tools out there. Too many. So, I know uh, students are actually spending a lot of time finding the right AI tools. End up um, spend time on investigating the tools, but um, not spending time doing the actual research. So, that is also time. Time being wasted. So my advice to you to use AI tool, go ahead, but use the good ones, the really, really proven ones like ChatGPT. That is my main reason that I um, strongly recommend that. Next class, I'll be exploring another tool. Okay, just for the publication part. But for now, I think ChatGPT is rather um, um, I won't say good, but rather uh, the one that um, uh, I very hard to, I don't even want to say reliable because I'm a bit worried. Um, uh, but something that um, you can look into. Okay. The rest, uh, I don't really trust what the first are doing. Like perplexity, I still find a lot of mistakes. The rest, uh, don't even want to talk about it. Lah. Okay. All right. Now coming to AI tools. How do AI tools work? This is what known as transformer topology. Why is it important to understand this? Because without this, okay, without this, you cannot understand how AI works. Okay, since you are not you are, some of you might be relying on AI um, to, to, you know, to help you with your research. You need to know the inner workings of AI. How does it actually give you those information? So that you will know whether you can trust the information or not. Okay, so this is what runs in AI. This is known as transformer network, a network also known as which implements artificial neural networks. Okay, mostly runs on artificial neural networks. Okay, when it comes to artificial neural networks, these are all the training layers. These are the hidden layers, hidden layers. All the information that uh, within AI, you might be wondering, how will the flood give me whatever else will give me answer? Because it was already pre-trained. They train. Okay, they train, they generate the information, they train and the, 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 the AI tool will, they, start, they call it generative AI, it will generate the, the answers based on the trained information. Okay, so remember I told you earlier, don't uh, proofread or upload your document into AI tools like uh, GPT-4, uh, Perplexity and so on, your whole, let's say your proposal chapter 1 to 3, your whole thesis, your journal paper and so on, uh, because whatever you upload will be stored. Okay, and what it does after storing, it will learn. Okay, it will learn like a baby. You tell anything to baby, baby will absorb. Okay, and then baby will learn. And then baby, whether you say uh, good things, bad things, bad words, it will learn. And suddenly one day it will start saying same concept. It will learn. Okay. And when another person comes along and asks something similar to you from, uh, from you know, other parts of the world, maybe something similar to your research topic, another person potentially might be doing somewhere in the world. When they ask a query, your information along with other information will be used to generate an answer for them. You cannot restrict AI from not using your information because you willingly uploaded the information into the AI tool. So don't upload your written information into AI platforms. They have the rights to store the information. Okay. I hope that is clear to all of you. Uh, and that also comes to the next answer. When you ask the flow to uh, you know, give you research answers and so on, you need to understand the flow only will give answers of the information the flow has. Okay, like example, uh, it won't have the copyright information. All the hybrid journals, 90% of the journals, the flow won't have the information. The flow won't have the information. The flow probably only will have the abstract information and open access journals. So when you ask answer, they are only giving, the flow only give you answers based on those information only. Okay. So all the hidden layers are pre-trained with data from every possible source except copyright limited. Like New York Times is currently suing GPT-4 because they found some copyright information there. Okay, so that is where they are being very, very careful now and more and more AI tools will be sued. Okay, next thing, chat GPT or any AI is only predicting one of the possible outcomes, not the precise outcome, but possible outcome. With transformer topology, it has to be pre-trained with available data. For law exam or bachelors, the answers are in textbook. So when the engine is trained with the textbook, somewhat it can give uh, the right answers. 
okay, with sufficient precision. But when for research masters or PhD, they are not trained with the hundred percent information because mostly a copyright. So no one knows what is going to happen. And the best part is the answers are not even there. The problem is not even there for it to train. The, 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 the actual literature review is not there for it to train the critical review. So that answers the overall hypothesis of how it will predict information. It's generating predicting an information that it doesn't have. So it will just put the information together and warm it out. So you need to do your own investigation, whether the information is usable or not. How do you do that? That's what we're going to uh, study today. What we're going to experience today. So this is GPT-4. I only use GPT-4 because so far that is the most reliable uh, um, uh, platform. Okay, the most latest one. Lah. So I need to also declare that I never use any AI tools for my own research. Okay, I just published one book chapter. Uh, I think was published in spring uh, last month. I got one more paper accepted in Elsevier, it says, yeah, Elsevier Q1 journal. None of it, uh, me and my co-authors use any element of AI simply because we in uh, senior academics, we don't trust AI. The, the outcome is not true. I am against using it. But it is something that unavoidable for most people because they are influenced by it. They have to use it. They, they get very worried when they cannot use. I've seen that before. So use it with caution. You need to be very, very careful when you use it. Okay, so what you do is when you prompt, don't simply go and ask the question immediately. You need to discuss with GPT, generative AI. You need to discuss and bring the lens to the area that you want the flow to focus. The flow got a huge lens, not only academic, the flow do everything in the world. So you need to narrow down to the area of focus that you want. We call that funnel prompting. You narrow down. Okay, so. I want to write a problem statement in management area. So I don't immediately ask or write me a problem statement in management area. No, I want to bring the first attention, focus to a specific area. So what I do, and the specific area has to be academia. What is the most uh, uh, obvious thing in academia? Journal, literature. So I tell the flood, suggest quartile one journal for management with highest impact factor. See the keyword, huh? highest impact factor, management, Quartile one. These are all uh, management, no, but management is just a specific subject area. Highest impact factor and quartile one, these two terms are used in academia predominantly. So the floor go and look for the training data that has these words. Okay, so the floor go to that particular information source. Then the floor give me the answer. The journal of academy, the journal academy of management annuals has an impact factor of 15.633 and is classified as a Q1 journal. Okay, now let's go to, this is how you investigate. Let's go to Web of Science JCR. Okay. Impact factor information can only be found on the journal website or Web of Science JCR. Web of Science JCR is not free. Okay, you can only access via your university. If you want to access it yourself, you need to have paid subscription. Okay, so Academy of Management Annals, the impact factor is 21.2. The latest impact factor 2023 is not out yet so we have 21.2 here okay. so but here the flow is telling 15.633 so it is true that um, academy of management Annals has the highest impact factor that is true but the impact factor uh, number is not true so my question to all of you where it got the numbers from 15.633 can anyone please advise where potentially you got it from Any suggestion, any idea, nothing is wrong. You can always uh, uh, advise based on your critical thinking. Date before 2022, previous year, the, the, the data out, uh, outdated. Okay, anything else? Two years ago, somebody uploaded Simago. Kalewani is right. It come from Simago. And it's not two years ago because JetGPT latest data is already April 2023. Updated as of April 2023. Okay, so it picked up from a website called Simago JR. Okay, 15.633. If you go to that website, uh, see, open itself ad ready. This is the third party website, which is not reliable. It's just giving out information. I don't know where it got from. But anyhow, 
AI tools don't care because it doesn't know. It doesn't know what is reliable, what is not reliable. It doesn't understand that. We academics, we know data is important, must be from Scopus or Web of Science. Anything else can be predatory. So it goes to this free website. The moment we, 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 uh, we, we ask for questions, so it goes to this website. It picks up the number from here. This is 2023, it picks up the number from 15.633-2022, the old number, okay? Because this is, it only trained up to this. We haven't trained here yet, okay? This is probably end of 2023. It, uh, the latest GPT-4 only trained up to April 2023, okay? So now, it from the information, it just vomits up without having intelligent, okay? You call this intelligent, I don't really call this intelligent. For me, I, I just feel AI tools are just vomiting whatever information it has. It just sort of, uh, no matter how much they spend, no matter how they, 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 they what they call that, they, they uh, brand it or they convince us. When we look at the actual information, any AI tools, okay? Uh, because the transformer network I shown you earlier, the graph, right? The artificial neural network diagram, all the AI tools in the world use the same concept. There is no any other to, uh, any other network or configuration in the world for AI. They all follow the same type. That's why they are all unreliable, complexity, whatever. Like, they all give fake information. Okay? Because it just match makes the information. You want this? Okay, I got this. Then I this one I got from this website, which sounds the same. Okay, this one they want. This one sounds the same. Okay, not it. It just gives you like that. Okay, so it's your job to investigate. Imagine this is a problem statement query and the flag gives you 50% true information, 50% false information. So from here, this is true. It is the highest impact factor. It is Q1, but this is wrong because ChatGPT doesn't understand the difference of impact factor and Simago general ranking. For it, it all it is all the same. It is just a number. That's it. Okay. Always need to understand that. That's so why you need to know the inner workings of AI. Okay, from here, now we already got the lens towards academia. We go down further, we tell the FLA, I tell the FLA, can you suggest a good research topic in the area of management for PhD research? I only ask this now because now I already got the first attention to a specific scope. The FLA, so much of data, right? billions of data, I go down to one specific element. Okay, let's say it's like a drawer. Okay, billions, the way I look at it, the way I picture it, billions of drawers, I open the academia drawer. Uh, now they're looking for information inside that drawer. Okay. Now from here, uh, they will give me these topics, sustainability, corporate responsibility, remote work, artificial intelligence. Now, this is where you can use AI. Uh, why I say so? Because for you to uh, read papers and to come up with such tangible information will take very long time. So you rather uh, speed up the work, okay? Look at all these uh, topics the plug give, and to reinvestigate based on these topics, whether it's actually reliable or not. So you know what I'm doing here? I am using AI as a personal assistant. That's it. A not so intelligent, although declared intelligent personal assistant. Not so intelligent. Huh? So what I do, I always get the information from my personal assistant. I always do my due diligence. I always go and check and you know uh, investigate the quality. Okay? So... Um, um, uh, so from all these topics, okay, from all these topics now, uh, you guys can uh, give your feedback and also register yourself uh, in that form. Okay, let's uh, uh, hold it for a while. Don't do it now. Wait for a while. Let me finish this, then you guys can do it. Okay. So from this, we have all this information now. Now, can I just take this and use it exactly? No. You need to find the source. Where the flow got this information from? So I asked the flow, where did you find these ideas? Where you got it from? And the flow told me the research topic I is provided from a combination of my training data, which includes a wide range of academic sources. That means all the open access papers, free books, and so on. Um, uh, industry publications. This is where I get a bit doubty because how reliable are these industry publications? Okay. Then contemporary discussions. Huh? Now this is the risky bit. Okay. You know where this discussion coming from? When individuals, individual researchers, okay, when they go to chat GPT, they discuss with them, they give their information unknowingly, 
they upload their document to proofread, they upload their document to paraphrase, they upload their document to ask for more ideas. The flood captures all those discussions, all those documents, right? That all clouds under contemporary discussion. So what does that mean? That means whatever idea the flood gives me here can be from one of the theses that is not fully completed yet. So I can quickly take it and write a paper now. I can quickly take it, take the idea, collect data, build the framework or build the experiment and run and publish a paper before even the student goes out and publish. Because this will take maybe two to three years for the student to finish. By then I already finished my paper and the student will be doomed. The student is doomed. Eh? So if any of you have uploaded any of your documents, it's already too late. But after this, please don't upload. You must be very intelligent because you cannot stop it from, from storing data. Okay, then when I ask the first person, don't give me any data. What's the last training cutoff date is April 2023. Okay, now, but I still need to know where it came from. So I say, okay, provide all the sources of your training. Because I'm going to say training, right? Training data, right? So I say, provide all the sources of your training related to these ideas. See, the first say, I don't have access to my training data or list of sources. That is a bit worrying. Okay, so then what I do, I say, how about some related literature to these ideas? At least some base la, to look at where the idea came from. So the person says, certainly. The first topic, look at these journals. The second topic, look at these journals. The third topic, look at these journals. So I say, okay, la, at least we know some journals. Okay, some journals. I checked out the journals. The journals are okay. okay now, now I go to the next step. So this is where, oh, sorry, uh, just a bit more. This is where it, you can use it for your literature review, but you should be the person who goes and read those papers. Please don't ask the flood to read the papers for you. Please don't, okay, please don't. Then go down, I say, okay. Now, based on the suggested literature above, can you write a problem statement for artificial intelligence in business operations for PhD thesis? Okay. Certainly, here is a problem statement that could be tailored for a PhD thesis on the topic of artificial intelligence in business operations. Okay. So, here is the whole problem statement. Uh, one, two, three paragraphs. Lah. Okay, done. Then I say, okay, provide all relevant literature to all the arguments above. I say, provide all relevant literature to all the arguments above. Because I want to know. So, then the person say, okay. Uh, the person say, okay, for, for from this problem statement, uh, GPT-4 break down into a few themes. So the first one is optimal integration strategies of AI. Okay, part of this problem statement, lah, it spoke on this topic. And refer to me, search for case studies and reviews in journals like Journal of Business Research or Information Systems Research that detail successful AI integration in businesses. So now I'm going to take this key phrase. I'm going to go to these journals to do my due diligence, my, my investigation. So I go to Elsevier Journal, Journal of Business Research, as mentioned here, Journal of Business Research. Okay. So I go there, I put that same key phrase, AI integration businesses, I search. When I search for papers, there are there are some papers that is that might be relevant to the topic. So good. Okay, so I can read these papers. Fantastic. Now the next journal the plus suggested is information systems research. Now, this one is a hardcore computer science journal. It is not a business journal. So when it says this particular journal, I'm a bit more skeptical because I say AI integration in business, not AI itself, not the AI tech. So, but never mind. I go to the journal. This is the journal publisher. So I go to the journal. I search for AI integration in businesses and I search when I get the outcome. You see information systems research. Huh? When I get the outcome, none of the journal even mentioned a word on business. None. None of it. They are all on technical AIs, uh, technical systems, technical computer science related stuff. So this is where it becomes 50% true and 50% false information. So when you go to AI to do literature review, do go ahead, but make sure after that, you perform your due diligence. Don't just copy and paste stuff. Don't just copy this thing and rephrase and paste it. This one might be not all true because you need to know the 100% source. So go down to the source, drill down to the source and go inside it and study the paper, whether it is really giving the information or not. Okay. So that is the moral of the story today that I really want to share how you prompt 
and from prompting how you do your due diligence and how do you exhibit your due diligence. So how do you deep dive into your due diligence? And from there, use that information, okay? And don't upload any of your in idea information into any AI tools. They all store information, okay? So with that, the pros, you can access information quickly from AI tools. Good to have an initial idea. Can be used to understand the overall perspectives. In other words, it is a personal assistant that is okay, okay, not superbly smart. Imagine like that. So whatever information the plug gives you or she or he gives you, you take the information, you go and do your study. So you save time. You don't spend so much of time getting the simple information. Okay, I hope that is clear. And the cons, limited to accessible documents only, very old sources, unreliable, Termitian AI can capture everything, no access to Scopus Web of Science Department ABDC journals, no. The, the hybrid journals, no chance. It cannot access. So predominantly, you're not reading the, the very, very important journals. That's why you get fake, fake journals like this now, because you cannot read the documents inside it. You just probably read one of the abstract or one of someone said business something and then put that general name together, they will just pick up and give you. Okay? So it's not really 100% there. So with that, let's go to turn it in AI. Any questions on AI parts? In one of the previous classes, uh, one of the students argued, they say, oh no, Jenny AI will give you exactly what it is. Then I proved to the student in the class itself, I showed. You go and search this in Jenny AI, the flow only gives you abstract. And the flow gives you the whole literature review statement just from the abstract itself. Abstract is only 2% information of a paper. How can you just plug and play? The entire paper could be something else. Abstract is only telling um, uh, what you call the introduction, your whatever you're trying to do, what is your result, and what is the achievement. But it is not going through the nuances of the content. It's only 2% information. So don't just take abstract level information. Okay. Uh, SS, how AI is detected? Can we cite AI text? Can we cite? You cannot cite AI text because AI text means you just copy and pasting. You're not writing your own work. So that is totally against what academic is uh, believing in. Uh, yes, recording is there. Later, probably they'll share in the group. Okay. So now, how AI is detected? Okay. Now, how? That's a very good question, actually. SS, you see this. When the flow have information, all AI tools, they use the same technique. And when they construct sentences, when they put in the writing, uh, they put segment by segment, which follows a specific pattern that cannot be broken. All AIs, they write the same, including Quillbot, when it paraphrase, they all write the same. So that's why Turnitin AI can capture all of it. They don't write differently. All the tools write the same because the background brain is the same, same style, same model, in other words. So in on that note, I went and investigated ChatGPT4, perplexity, Jenny AI. Whatever the flow right, same uh, apple to apple comparison. So I asked the same question, the same topic on all three platforms. Then the answer for ChatGPT4, Turnitin AI, 100%. Okay, you see the normal turning in is up here. Okay, this is the normal turning in, uh, which scans the entire internet. So it, it won't you won't find the information in the internet because it generates the, its own text. But there is another element down here called AI. That one will show you 100%. Then the next one, perplexity also 100%. The next one, Jenny AI also 100%. So the worst part here is, you know what's the worst part here, uh, which I don't really agree to be honest. Turn it in the way it designed, it only shows this turn it in to students, instructor, and library. However, the turn it in AI is only shown to instructor and library. Students cannot see. So if you want to paraphrase and recheck, 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 if you use a student account, you, this will be never visible to you. You cannot see this. So you might be thinking, oh, I wrote from uh, the AI. I go turn it in zero. Yes, good. No, it's actually here. This will still show 100%. Okay, next question, SEH, if I paraphrase the text multiple times, still can detect, you can paraphrase, we are doing it, we are reducing it in AI, but uh, if it is too much of copying, let's say 95, 
uh, going out of context is um, sometimes unavoidable. The context will be changed, like technical terms, very hard to change. Okay, so firstly, you are taking the risk of unreliable information. If you're okay with that, the next risk going out of context, well, you can paraphrase, surely. Multiple times when you paraphrase, make sure you check back every context. Because when you use synonyms to, to paraphrase, that means similar sounding word, word, but or similar meaning words, but the context would actually be totally something else. Something else. Okay? Um, uh, it's like, um, uh, I want to eat chicken. Let's murder a chicken. Okay, let's murder a chicken. It's not right. Let's slaughter a, ch let's slaughter a chicken. Okay, you don't murder a chicken. Right? You murder a human. Okay, so that is a simple context I can give you. When you use those kind of uh, connotations, synonyms in, in, in your thesis proposal, uh, it goes uh, royally wrong. Okay, and people will know that you paraphrase everything. Easily like that, they'll pick up. Okay? So you must do it intelligently. Don't simply go to synonyms and then just all use all the synonyms. It won't work. Okay? I hope that is clear. Uh, how about I use undetectable AI or billboard? All the same. You can check out my TikTok video. I've experimented all of it. I have a full playlist of it. Um, uh, if you go here, TikTok, proofreading, paraphrasing, quillboard, um, whatever AI tools is out there, I've spent my time that you can go through this playlist. AI thesis for proposal, so the AI for thesis or proposal. Go through all these videos here. Uh, you can find out before you're committing um, uh, a long-term uh, disaster. Okay? Uh, so I hope that is clear. Now, then, what do I do? Uh, that will be the next question going on in your mind. If I cannot use AI, not, not cannot use, if I cannot 100% rely on AI, whatever outcome the plug gives me, I have to paraphrase, the information can be reliable, unreliable, can be false, can be lie, can be a cheat. All of those, don't worry. That's where you can start using traditional method. That is where you bind in your AI and traditional method together. That will give you the literature source like just now. You take, you read the paper, you use this template, do critical review on your own. You have to do some work. It's your PhD, right? So um, go through 17 questions here given. This is already endorsed by many supervisors. When they go through these questions I created, critical review will be easily done without even you realizing. Just answer the questions, okay? And then summarize. There's a template here to summarize, summarize your literature. Summarize and take this information, copy and paste into your... Uh, what do you call that? Uh, your chair proposal, thesis, or journal, and literature matrix. There are many templates like this that you can use. Okay, I only have limited time, so I've developed certain templates. There are people also selling these kind of templates. They are more comprehensive. Uh, per templates, I think they're selling like four or five pounds per template uh, in the UK. So if you want more templates, you can also start looking around. Many people are selling this, but I give this for free, no charges, so that it will help you. Uh, in your journey, okay? All right, now going to the final bit, uh, final bit. So when I stress a lot, don't proof it with AI, don't, don't paraphrase with AI and so on, I would recommend you to go out and seek human proofreading. Go, people went away from there, now taking a big U-turn and coming back because they know all the, all the dynamites and landmines that lies within those space, okay? 13 AI and so on. So with every thesis or proposal and, uh, 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 and also journal especially, when you submit, make sure you always have a proofreading certificate because that proves that you have used, you have used lesser AI. That gives a different uh, perspective to journals also. Definitely examiners would appreciate it, okay? And how your document must be after proofreading paraphrasing. Okay? Many don't know what to expect when they hire a human, right? That is, that is what you would expect. You look at this. These are all tracking. That is how the amount of changes that we make. This is none other than Dr. Sharifah's thesis, which gotten uh, zero correction last year, August. She completed a viva. So literally, that means she finished the viva, take the thesis, no comment, right? Hard bind, submit, finish PhD. No correction whatsoever after viva. We only have gotten, I think, in this all these years, about five only. And the fifth one was last year, August. Lah. And the literally, this is the examiner feedback, which said, mechanical aspect, grammar, spelling, numbering, punctuation. The thesis is largely well written with no stylistic concern. So you can already know 
when you get this kind of comments, maximum minor correction. You surely minor correction space already. Makes your life easier. So with that, with all the faculties or graduate schools that we work with, we always extend you know, the, the, the discount to all the students and uh, academicians. This is for ultimate thesis package up to 30% off, which includes only proofreading, translation, formatting. Many students come back and ask me to use the 30% of coaching. I cannot. It's only for this proofreading purpose only. Okay. And with that, the most important, what you get is lifetime language warranty. So you proofread your proposal, you proofread your thesis, you go and submit examiner say language needs improvement. You can come back, we'll recheck for free. Okay. But if you have made any changes, uh, then we will charge you to proofread only those change parts. Okay. I hope that is clear. Uh, this one we can skip and go to 25 steps to defend your thesis, proposal defense or viva. So what happened was uh, in all these years, we have uh, dealt with about 36 plus thousand students and academicians. Okay, so you can say uh, 60 to 70 percent of each students. So whenever we coach them for proposal defense viva, they will go and come back to us. Okay, and then we will ask them, I personally will ask them what kind of questions they ask you. So from different faculties, different environment, huh? computer science, management, uh, physics, energy, uh, linguistics, language a lot. Uh, nowadays, a lot of museum studies, uh, traditional studies, then we have medical, a lot of public health, surgical, uh, and then uh, engineering, definitely information systems, business management, accounting, finance, all of it, like, all of the spaces that we have worked, to, worked on, we get the questions, I will take out all the common ones. And from there, I've accumulated to create this. These are the common questions that you will get no matter the area. Technical questions will be different. That depends on your own thesis. But the common ones are these. Question one, in few sentences, can you tell us what your study is all about? So if you plan to do slides, write, you know, like wording and wording and wording in your slides for you to read and answer, uh, you are in deep state trouble because that means you don't understand your thesis. When they, they, and to lock you, they will normally tell in few sentences, can you tell us what your study is all about? Which slide you're going to read? This one you have to explain your own, okay? What is your motivation for this study? How will this study contribute to the body of knowledge? What is the significance of the study? Did you bridge any gap from your study? What limitations did you encounter? What are your findings? This are, these are the first seven. Lah. Then, what methods or sampling technique did you employ? Let's say you employed a, a random sampling. And then the examiner asks you, you cannot say, oh, my supervisor asked me to do, so I do. Oh, it's the most convenient for me than I do. Doesn't work that way. Okay, it has to be liter it has to be proven via literature that you need to use this, this sampling technique. Why this, why choose this method? Some of you do data mining, do uh, you know Python and so on. You must be able to see why this method, why quantitative, why qualitative? Because my supervisor is good in quantity, so I do quantity. That's not the right answer. Literature-wise, what is the issue? And why this particular method? Okay. Based on your findings, what are your recommendations? Based on your findings, what areas will you suggest for future research? How can your research study be put into practice? How would you summarize your study to a practitioner in a few sentences? What would you change if you were to conduct the study again? What is your measurement instrument? What are your research variables? What do you plan to do with your research project after graduation? What are your research questions and why you need it? Okay, example this one. Uh, some of you might be from computer science background. No more, might not be research variables, but it'll be more system. Okay, it'll be more system under test. So you talk about that here. You replace with that. What source of data was employed for the study? What theory? Some of you might not have theories. You can ignore this totally. Okay. But it's a very famous question for engineering, social science as well. Okay. In different forms of theories. Uh, how would you relate your findings to existing theories on the study? What recommendations do you have for future research? What is the scope of the study? What questions do you have for the committee? And do you have any closing comments or not? Okay. So these are the Typical 25 questions that you might get. Okay. Now we are almost towards the end, but not the end yet. I have a very, very good sample thesis for all of you. As I advised earlier, you must always have a good sample thesis. This is from Dr. Naeem Hayat, one of my former consultees many years ago, many years ago. 
Um, uh, he finished his PhD in two years and seven months. He also graduated before time, graduated before time with 17 publications. 11 of it were web of science. Okay. So my question to you is, how many of you here want a copy of this thesis to see how graduate before time thesis was very or was written? Okay, please let me know how many of you need a copy of this. It's okay if it is out of, out of your field, but at least you can <clears throat> you can have a feeling how it actually looks like. Okay, how to actually structure a thesis. Okay, so it seems like a lot of energy, a lot of inspiration here. So, okay, I will share with all of you. No problem. And um, for those who are stuck in their work, okay, in their study, proposal, journal, pub, uh, thesis, and so on, what to do if you're stuck? Okay, in our coaching and consulting space, okay, we have uh, achieved a lot of award-winning theses and even uh, zero corrections, and this is what we do. PhD proposal consultancy, Scopus Web of Science publications, as early as your chapter one to three already. Defense preparation, proposal defense examiner response will coach you how to respond and so on, prepare you for your defense. Data analysis and interpretation will teach you how to conduct the entire analysis. Uh, this is to general conversion. This is where our main uh, uh, advantage li uh, lies because this is where, as we coaching a lot, this is the general conversion. We realize that you can actually publish a lot more at the early stage itself. No need to wait until the end. Viva preparations and finally, this is examiner response. These are the eight scopes that we generally work on. Okay. And as I told, this were the recent publications. This was on uh, public health. From University of Warwick, UK, uh, top uh, eight, I think, in the UK. Student finish chapter one to three. Uh, uh, we coach for a paper, concept paper, which is also known as protocol paper in medical area, chapter one to three, from chapter one to three. Managed to publish in Map of Science Q2, I think, in seven months, which is chapter one to three. Okay, the, it's a Canadian publication, JMIR publications. Similarly, sometimes empirical paper can take longer. This paper also published this year, uh, chapter four to six. Uh, we coach how to write the empirical paper. It was solely on uh, uh, smart PLS, published in Web of Science Q1, but took uh, accepted this year. We started coaching last year, uh, one year and three months to get this acceptance. That's how long it took. Okay, so prepare early. Start writing your journal concurrently as soon as you finish your proposal. Don't wait until you get your data. Okay. So with that, the upcoming classes, I'll email to all of you. Don't worry, please fill up the form. Okay, they have shared the form earlier. If you have not filled up, please fill it up. Uh, Mandy or uh, Kalevani, can I get the link again? So next coming classes, we're going to focus on high impact publications and fulfilling graduation requirements. I will try to insert a bit of AI element there. And the rest, we're going to fully focus on chapter one development. Thanks, Kare. Chapter one development. So class two, three, four coming soon. And if you are interested on other classes, we can do it on Facebook Live, TikTok Live, and so on. If you have any specific topic that you want to focus on, okay, what you can do is, um, yeah, I'll share the good example uh, sample later. This is link. You can go to Ethos. E T H O S. Go to Ethos. Ethos, you can find thesis. Okay. So now, for those who want to uh, request for other classes, maybe you are stuck in certain other places that were not covered today. You can request, okay? You can request, uh, uh, and if I find time and if the topic is, is relevant for everyone, I will conduct it live. How do you request? Okay, this is our office basically. Before I get to that, this is where we are located in Cyberjaya. Uh, if you ever want to visit, do set an appointment. Now, for those who want to request their own class, uh, go to this particular link, okay? Some of you would have requested last year, some of the classes I've conducted already. Uh, it's on the Facebook uh, Facebook page. You can go to this link, click this link, hit five star, not less than five star. Click the review five star, and then in the comment, write down what classes you want uh, on live platform. So I'll do that separately out of USM for public, uh, what do you call that, uh, public platform. Okay, you can join either through YouTube, Facebook, or uh, TikTok. Okay, so that is the link. If you're going to give less than five stars, don't go to that link. You can WhatsApp me directly. Okay, you can WhatsApp me directly. Can someone share the Telegram group link? Can, can, no problem. Here you go. Okay, that is the Telegram link. So with that, thank you very much for your time today. We are done uh, right on time.
So, uh, Mandy, we are done. Or, oh, Kale, if you are around, we are done. Ah, Mandy is here. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. So, uh, thank you very much to Dr. Tawa for imparting the knowledge with all of us. So, I see there are some uh, accommodation, uh, academic as well. Academic, uh, some of our staff are here and also uh, the students. So, Dr. Tawa, I think uh, we cannot ignore the AI tools, but beside that, uh, what you mentioned earlier, the critical thinking is still needed and also a uh, student must also understand and apply the knowledge. Yeah, so yes. I think we cannot, right. we cannot deny that. Yeah, so yeah. thank you again, Dr. Tawa. On behalf of USM uh, Computer Science School, we would like to thank you for this uh, knowledge that you have imparted. On the other end, we are also going to have uh, another three session for this year. Okay, so stay tuned for the uh, announcement. And as for the recording, uh, we will share the recording. Normally what happened is um, once we have actually uh, get our recording, we will pass to Dr. Tawa and he will upload it. Okay, sure. so that is one, one way. And on the other hand, we also have it uh, in CS Facebook as well. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We you, also you have like YouTube as well, right, Mandy? Yes, yes, we do have that as well. Okay. So normally okay. we will right. upload that and that is the link that we pass to you as well. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. So okay. we can use that link to put it up in your sure. WhatsApp group as well. Sure. Okay. No all right. So thank you again. Make sure you, you take you. the attendance and all right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tawa. Have no a nice problem. day. To Thanks, you. Mandy. Thanks for having me. So as what Mandy mentioned, I always stress you cannot avoid AI. It's already there. Okay. It's like uh, your living thing ready. But how to use it? It's where defines uh, your journey. It's what will define your journey. Okay. So uh, thank you, Mandy, and thank you everyone for joining today. So see you all in the next class. Thanks. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. And to you the too, audience, too, thank Mandy. you uh, as well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>